We just blew up this 990FX killer motherboard from ASRock. Actually, lit it on fire is maybe more correct. So as you'll see in the B-roll, it's actually got some burnt out traces from the 24-pin power. And I'm suspicious. I'm not sure if this is from the board, from the power supply, or from the CPU. I have a feeling it's from the motherboard because I tested the CPU and other boards, AM3 Plus boards, and it worked fine. The power supply seems fine. I already tested that. I'm going to show you in this video how we tested it. And so that leaves us with the board, and this board is not particularly good. Uh, it's, it's just problematic in a lot of ways, and one of them is obviously traces that light on fire, apparently. So what happened was I was testing this on our open-air bench just like that, had the CPU in it, I was testing the Wraith cooler. This is a couple weeks ago, testing the Wraith cooler, and before it even got to BIOS, I smelled smoke or fire. And so normally in the past when I've smelled that, it's just dust burning out of the power supply. It was a power supply I hadn't used in a while, so kind of just figured that was it. But nope, no BIOS, no video. I tried for a little while, touched the pump on the, the CLC when I was testing that and found that the pump was not powered. So either the pump was dead or the board was problematic. And we found out it was the board because it wasn't supplying power to anything. And that's because when I took it off the bench and looked at the underside, the traces were lit on fire. And they definitely smelled like it. So we're going to check out some of the power supply testing that we're doing to basically validate that this thing is, is a motherboard problem. And for that, we have our fancy uh, anti-static proof workbench right here. That's where that blue stuff is. It's an ESD mat. Got the power supply pinout. This is a pinout that shows where the 12 volt lines are, three and a half or 3.3 volt lines are rather, five volt ground, all that stuff. And I'll be checking that against our power supply with a, with a multimeter. So got a multimeter, got a power supply, and we got a paper clip. You probably shouldn't pick power supplies up like this, by the way. Uh, and uh, so we've got all those. Uh, I need my, my paper clip, of course. So we got the paper clip. And this, as you probably may have seen in an ancient video of ours, is used to jump the power supply. So you jump a, a green and a black pin from the 24-pin header. That will start the power supply without actually needing to plug it into a motherboard and hit the power button. So for testing the power supply, all I'm going to do is see if the voltage coming out of this 24-pin header is correct. Is it about 12 volts in the 12-volt lines, about 3.3 the 3? And is it about 5 volts in the 5 volt lines? That's pretty easy to do uh, with colored wires. This power supply does not have the colored wires, which is really nice aesthetically. This is a, what Enermax has done basically to they've braided their cables. So they have braided cables, and that means that we need the pinout chart that I have on the wall, uh, which you normally don't need, of course, but we do in this case because we're jumping this with a, with a paper clip. So you don't want to jump the wrong pins. Make sure you're certain what is the correct pin, because if you do the wrong ones, you could kill the power supply or hurt yourself. And for this one, I already know that we're basically starting, there's a blank pin over here. We're gonna start a few to the right of that, just right of the, uh, the clip here, this little clip that grabs the motherboard. So I am gonna plug in our paper clip in the correct green and black. And I actually just heard the power supply tick on. So I made that electrical current tick. And normally it's pretty easy to just look at the fan in the power supply and see if the fan spins up. This Enermax power supply is fanless, which is uh, great in every instance except this one. So we can plug in a 120 millimeter fan. I've got plenty of those. I'll plug that into the Molex. And if that spins up, we know the power supply is on. All right, so I've got a fan, it's a 120 millimeter fan. We're gonna put that over here. And you can see I've kind of jerry-rigged things. The fan only has a three pin header. So I've connected it to a three pin to Molex. And now I'm gonna connect that to the power supply. And once we do that, I just saw it try to spin. Once we connect that, yep, so the fan has spun up. That means the power supply is obviously providing power through this jumped pin. That's what's triggering the, the start loop, basically. Electrically, it's triggering it to turn on and sup supply power. So now we can take the multimeter, set that to voltage DC, because the, everything coming out of this is DC voltage, or DC power, rather. What's coming from the wall is AC, or alternating current. The power supply converts it to direct current, and direct current DC comes out of here. So we're talking for DC voltage with the multimeter, and I'm just going to take these probes and then check uh, a ground against a hot wire. So we're going to check a ground against a 3.3, ground against a 5 volt, and a ground against a 12 volt, which normally reads between 11 and 12, normally 11.95 or something. 
And I know those just from the chart that we have on the wall. So I know which pin is what, and we'll be able to check the voltage on the readout and see is this power supply providing the correct voltage. Now, quick note, sometimes these power supplies have regulators in them, which is a good thing normally, but it means that the voltage may not be fully supplied. There may actually be no power provided at all if there's no load generated. So that's what these fans come in for. It will require some kind of kick from the power supply because it's got to generate a power output to power the fan. You can plug in hard drives if you're not getting power still because those do draw more. So that's the process for determining if the power supply is good, and this one is. And I know the CPU is good because I tested the CPU in other AM3 Plus motherboards. So we're basically left with uh, the motherboard is awful and burned and dead. <laughs> so that's garbage. It will probably end up on a shelf or a wall in the background of the set from now on because it has no functional use left in its life. But just a quick insight to how some of the testing goes, how it works behind the scenes when we blow stuff up because it does happen quite often. And just as a side note, ESD, by the way, is real. That's why we have these mats. This one's not technically plugged in right now. You do basically drive a, a screw through the mat that connects to a mesh on the inner layer and that helps ground it when you plug the, the opposite end of the screw, which is normally terminates in a power cable into the grounding pin and an outlet. We'll talk about that in a future video, but that keeps everything safe. So we know it was an ESD that killed the motherboard. It was just something screwy between the, the CPU and the board itself. It was an AMD AM3 Plus, uh, very hot CPU. So those things are kind of tricky sometimes. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Hit that Patreon link in the post for the video if you want to help us out directly. Check the link in the description below to check out the website. And I will see you all next time.